So this is what he looks like after he's all finished. And you can decide what you want to do if you want to place a collar on him or if you would like to dress him in pet clothes. For one of mine, I dressed him in zero to three months baby clothes. So if you're having a baby shower, this would be a fun way that you can give this crochet dog as well as a baby outfit. And again, this baby outfit fits zero to three months of age. So for this one, I'm going to be combining it with this Melissa and Doug veterinarian outfit and set, as well as some sunglasses from Build-A-Bear Workshop. I also have a small collar from Good To Go, Love Rescue, and also a name tag. His name will be Prince. You could also make the large dog. So I have my large Scooby-Doo dog video tutorial, which is a separate video tutorial. I actually had two of them. One of them went to Helen Woodward Animal Center shelter for a fundraiser, and this other one I named Buddy. So the vet outfit actually fit Buddy, so I was happy to see that it fit him. I went ahead and put the pet outfit on him, and you can see how he has a little name tag, so you can put a picture of the child who um, wants to wear this coat, vet coat. The set comes with a hat and has a cute dog and bone around the cuffs of the sleeves. It has Velcro down the front, so you could take it on and off of your dog. I put two AAA batteries into the stethoscope, so the stethoscope fits around the neck of Buddy, and it also makes a sound, a heartbeat sound. The back of the jacket says Animal Hospital. When you lift up the jacket, I have a secret compartment. I show how to make a secret compartment with the zipper, so you can open it and put stuff inside of the actual dog. And again, this is my Great Dane dog, the larger one. There's a separate video tutorial for the larger Great Dane dog. And then this video tutorial, of course, shows you how to make the smaller one. So the Great Dane puppy dog measures about 17 inches from the floor to the tip of the ear, and then 14 inches from the nose to the back of the body. The larger Great Dane is about 22 inches from the floor to the tip of the head, so I didn't go to the top of the ears on this one. And it's about 26 inches from the nose to the back of the body. So now I'm going to show you what else comes with the jacket for the vet outfit. So on the bottom of the dog you can see how there's a little pouch for the thermometer as well as the syringe. So this is what the syringe looks like and it has a little spring in it. And here is the thermometer. And with the thermometer, you can press the end, and you can see how it changes the thermometer temperature. And then you have two other pockets on the other side. One has a bandage, and then the other has a mask. So here is the bandage. It has a Velcro on it, and it's a little band aid. And then you have a mask. So here you have the front of the mask and then you have the loops on the side that have Velcro on them for putting the mask on. So this just makes a really cute gift or toy. And it also comes with a cute little dog too. And this is the size difference compared to your little Great Dane dog. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook along with a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn that I used is by Crafters Secret and the color is light taupe. This is Red Heart Super Saver, Cherry Reds, my leftover yarn for the tongue and also Red Heart Black Yarn and a white colored yarn for the eyes. I like to use the Sparkle, has a little bit of a sparkle through it, Sparkle White Yarn. So now just take your main colored yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. 
Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around the crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain of 15. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15, and then come back. Now, after you finish your chain of 15, you're going to take your crochet hook, and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. Go ahead and bring up a loop, and then finish a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. Then you should have a stitch count of 14. And you're going to maintain that stitch count for, let's see, 22 rows. So a total of 22 rows, counting this first one that we just made. So then go ahead, chain one, and then turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then one single crochet into every stitch back across. So that is your second row, then you're going to repeat and again, you're going to maintain your stitch count of 14. So you then chain one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then a single crochet in every stitch back across. And again, you're going to repeat this until you have a total of 22 rows. So for the head, you're going to need four of these panels. And again, you started with a chain of 15, and then you had 22 rows total, and then you finished off, and you made four of them. And I'm just going to give you the measurement because different yarn styles will affect the size of the head. So this one is approximately, let's see, about 8 centimeters by... 14 and a half centimeters. You're also going to make a top panel for the head and it's made the same way. You're going to start with a chain of 15 but you're only going to make 15 total rows. And the measurement is about nine and a half actually nine centimeters by eight centimeters. So eight by nine centimeters. Then after you have all of your panels you can take your tapestry needle and get ready to sew the pieces together. So the first thing you're going to do is just take two of the head panels and put them on top of each other. And then the right, the wrong side will be facing you and the right sides will be together. So make sure that the side that you want showing will be on the inside. Then you can take your tapestry needle and just go through the opposite stitch on the other panel and then you're just going to sew that top stitch together. all the way across. So then you could see that the right side has a nice seam and then on the wrong side you have a ridged seam. So make sure that when you're sewing you always keep the ridged seam on the wrong side. So now you're ready to get your next panel. So you're just going to put the right sides together and you can always open it up to make sure that your the right seams are on the right side and the ridged seam will be on the wrong side so you know that you've lined it up correctly and then you can take 
I'm just making sure I have the right side that I want showing. And then you just take your tapestry needle and then sew the next panel in place. And you're going to sew all four panels together for the head, making sure that the ridged side is on the wrong side and that you have the right sides together. So this is what my head looks like so far. I'm going to turn it inside out. And before we put the top on the head, I'm going to show you how to make the eyes. So we're going to set this aside for now while we make the snout and the eyes. So for the snout, you're going to start it the same way. You're going to take your same colored yarn, and you can use a little darker tan colored yarn if you wanted to, but for this project I'm using the same colored yarn. And I'm just going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. And then I'm going to take my crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with my middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a slip knot, Go ahead and cinch that knot down, cinch the loop around your hook. And then I'm just going to show you how to chain four, but you're going to make a chain of 11. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11, and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 11, you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch back across. So now, this is how your work looks. You're going to make a chain of one, and then you're going to turn your work, and that first chain counts as your first stitch for this next row. And you're going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And so that, because we made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook on our starting chain, that gives us a stitch count of 10. So after we made a chain one here and a single crochet in every stitch across, you're still going to have a stitch count of 10 when you finish this next row. So now you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet in every stitch back across. And you're going to repeat this for six more rows. So this one will count as your first one. And you're going to make a total of six more rows. This counts as the first one. So the next one would be your second. And you're going to finish when you finish a total of six. Not counting what we've already finished. Then, you can go ahead, after you finish your last row, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to sew the pieces together. Now you're going to need three more panels just like this one. And I just want to give you the, the measurements for this panel. So the measurements for this panel are six centimeters by five centimeters. So six by five centimeters. So now you have the four pieces for the snout and we're going to sew the snout together. So remember that you have the lengthwise is longer, slightly longer than the height of it. So you want the lengthwise, the rows are going from left to right and the longer length to be on top of the other panel. And then the short side or the rose will go on the, the towards the head of the dog. So you're just going to grab your tapestry needle and then sew the edges together. So you just take your tapestry needle and you just sew the two ends together. So I have the right sides together and the ridge created 
will be on the wrong side. And then when you open it up, you'll have the nice seam on the right side and the ridge will be on the wrong side. And then you just take your next panel lengthwise, the longer edge against the longer edge. And you can always open it up to make sure that you have the right seam on the right side. And then you just sew the next panel in place. So now this is what my snout looks like after it's sewn all together and you can turn it. Actually you're not going to turn it yet because we're going to make the top of the snout. So you can set this aside. So for the top of the snout you're going to make it the same way. You're just going to fold the yarn over on itself. I have the same colored yarn and we're going to make our slip knot. And this time you're going to start with a chain of seven. And then you're also going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and one single crochet in each stitch back across which will give you a stitch count of six when you're finished. And this is what your work will look like. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet in each stitch back. And you're going to repeat this seven times. So this will count as your first row, the one that we're working on, and then you'll make six more, which will give you a total, counting this one, seven. And if you count this initial starting one, it'll be eight. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the top of the snout in place. And I'm going to give you the measurements. The measurements for this one, approximately five centimeters by three and a half centimeters. So now I have my snout and the ridges are on the wrong side facing me. And you're going to take the top of the snout and just place it on the snout. And I just take one of the loose yarn ends on the snout and just tie it into a knot. Just put it back after I finish. And you can use any of the loose yarn ends. You can always trim them later. I leave them because I might use them. I don't want to waste the yarn. So you just kind of fit the top of the snout in place like a little puzzle piece. It should fit. You have it lined up correctly if it fits on top. Then you just line up the edges. And your ridges created by sewing will be on the wrong side. So you know you're doing it correctly. And then you just sew it all the way around to secure it in place. So after you sew the snout top in place, you can take and turn the snout inside out. And now you're ready to make the nose. So you can set the snout aside for now while we make the nose. So for the nose, you're going to use your black colored yarn. And you're going to take the yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop, just like we've done before. And you're going to start with your slip knot, so just yarn over and go through the loop, and then cinch that knot down, and then cinch the loop around the hook. And then you're going to make a chain of five. So there's one, two, three, four, Five. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. 
and you're going to make a single crochet into each stitch except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. And as you make your three single crochet into the last stitch you're going to turn your work so that we work on the opposite side because we're going to be working in rounds. So make my last single crochet into the last stitch and I'm going to work behind my loose yarn end. So now I'm on the opposite side working in rounds and I'm going to go into the next stitch, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to make three single crochet into that last stitch, which will bring me back to where I started. So after my second single crochet in the same stitch, I'm going to go ahead and trim my loose yarn end and then make my last stitch in the same stitch. And then I'm ready to work in rounds. So for mine, I have a total of 11 stitches in the round. And you can go ahead and get your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. I'm just using one of my scraps of yarn. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of two rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of two rounds. So when you reach your yarn marker, you just leave it in place. It helps you keep track of your rounds, where you are in your work. So I'm just going to show you. So I'm almost to the yarn marker. My last stitch before the yarn marker, I'm going to leave it in place and I need one more round. So I finished one round because I know I reached my yarn marker and I need one more round. So I'm going to continue making one single crochet in every stitch until I'm back to the yarn marker. And you can turn your work inside out and then continue. So after you finish your second round, go ahead and remove that yarn marker and then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the nose onto the snout. And for my nose, I just take yarn the black yarn. Just take a little bit of your black yarn to use as stuffing. And the reason why I do this is because sometimes the holes on the end of the nose will show the craft stuffing. So if you use black yarn as your stuffing, you won't have that. And then you have a really cute nose for the snout. So now you're going to take your snout, here's the front of the snout, and determine which side that you want on top. So if, it, if you want this part to be on top or the other side, the front of the snout, the length, the longer length is going to be facing you. So you want it to be longer this way, so not like this. So the snout's going to go on like this. And this is the portion that I want on top of the snout. So I'm going to take my nose, and I usually where I finished off is towards the bottom. And I have my stuffing in the nose, and I'm going to line it right on top of the snout. 
So the bottom of the nose is going to line up with that edge. Here is the front of the snout, so I'm lining it right at the top of that front of the snout. And you also want to make sure that your nose is centered. So make sure that you have, here's the top panel of the snout. Make sure that the nose is even on both sides. Then you can take your tapestry needle and just go in with your tapestry needle so sewing the nose to the snout. And you just come up through the bottom edge of the nose. And then you're just going to sew it all along the base of the nose onto the snout. So when you're finished sewing the nose in place, you're going to come out with your tapestry needle at the center of the base, front base of the nose and just come out. We're going to make the mouth and then you're going to go straight down to the bottom of the front of the snout. And then you're going to come back out for the, the side of the smile. And I follow the front of the snout. So here's the edge of the front of the snout. And I'm coming about halfway up for the side, one of the sides for the smile. And then go back in the center. And then you're going to go on the opposite side at the same level. You want the smile to be the same on both sides. and then just go back in the center. And then you can make your freckles. At any time, if you need more black yarn, you just get more black yarn. And then for the freckles, you just come out on the side, and then just about a stitch, you go back in. You can place your freckles wherever you want them. So this is what mine looks like after placing three freckles on each side on the front portion of the snout. So now I'm going to make the bottom portion of the mouth. So you can set this portion aside. Now for the bottom portion of the mouth, you're going to take the same colored yarn as the snout and then just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go through the loop, and we're going to make our slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then the yarn around the loop. And then you're going to make a chain of 11. I'm just going to show you four of them. So there's one, two, three, and four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11. So after you finish your chain of 11, you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the second chain from the hook and bring up a loop and complete a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch, just like we did for the nose. So now I have one stitch left. I want to make my three single crochet into that last stitch. And I'm going to turn my work as I make my three single crochet into the same stitch. And I'm going to work behind the loose yarn end as I turn. And now I'm on the opposite side. I'm going to work in rounds. I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. I'm going behind my loose yarn end bring up a loop and finish a single crochet. I'm going to bury my loose yarn end as I work. It just helps to strengthen your work and make it less likely for it to come undone. So you just make one single crochet 
in every stitch across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. So I have one more stitch left. I'm going to go ahead and trim my loose yarn end. Get it out of the way. And then finish my three single crochet into the last stitch. So I have a total of 23 stitches in the round. If you're off by one or two, that's okay. That It doesn't matter. I just give you an approximation. So I ended up with 23. But now, when you're working in rounds, whatever you ended up for this worst first round, the stitch count, you should maintain that stitch count for the next four rounds. So you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. You're going to use the yarn marker as a marker, so you're going to leave it in place when you get back to it. And you're going to continue making one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of four rounds and then come back. So you're going to maintain your stitch count for four rounds. Also, as you're working in rounds, go ahead and push the inner portion in as you crochet. Because the right side is going to be facing you and then the wrong side will be on the inside. So now you can see I have one, two, three, four rounds that I made. And I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into my next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. Then finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the mouth onto the snout. So now you're going to set this aside. We're going to make the black portion that goes on top of the mouth. So you're going to take your black yarn you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around the crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain of 11. So there's one, two, three, So after you make your chain of 11, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch back across. And we're not going to be working in rounds for this portion. So one single crochet in each stitch back across. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to, the, this first chain one counts as your first stitch, so you're going to work into the next stitch over for your next single crochet. And your stitch count should be 10, even though we started with a chain of 11. Because we made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook, that brought our stitch count to 10. So you're going to make one single you're going to repeat this chain one single crochet into each stitch across maintaining your stitch count of 10. So this counts as your first row and you're going to make three more for a total of four and then counting that first one that we made will make five. Then after you finish your last row, go ahead and finish off just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to sew this portion onto the mouth. So now you're going to get your tapestry needle 
And then you're going to line the black portion up to where you have, this is the front edge of the mouth. And so you're going to leave one row open. So just kind of edge the black portion up to that front portion of the mouth, but leave a little bit of that first row and then just take your tapestry needle and go through the center not through the opposite side of the mouth. You don't want it showing through the opposite side. You only want it sewn to the top portion. Oops! Sorry about that. So again, and then don't twist that yarn that you're going to use to sew it to the snout. You can kind of move that out of the way. And then you just take and sew the black portion onto the top of the mouth. And just secure it in place. So mine hangs a little bit over the edge of the opening, which is fine. This is going to be sewn to the bottom of the snout anyway, so you're not going to be able to see that portion. So now you can set this portion aside while we make the tongue. So for the tongue, you can use your cherry red yarn, which is what I used for my other dog. But for this dog, I'm going to use my Karen Simply Soft Party Red Sparkle yarn. So it's just a preference for what you want to use for the color of your tongue. Pink always works well, too. And so you're going to take whatever color you want for the tongue, fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop, and then we're going to make a slip knot. And then you're going to chain five. One, two, and then you're going to single crochet back across. So in the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and then one single crochet into each stitch back across. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch, and then you're going to slip stitch into the last stitch. And then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue in place. So before we sew the tongue in place, the tongue in place, take your tapestry needle with the shorter loose yarn end, and you're going to want to weave it back towards the back of the tongue and then just kind of bury it in the back of the tongue and then you can just kind of trim it and then your tongue is ready to be sewn in place so now you can take and place the tongue on the edge wherever you want it on the edge of the black portion and then just sew it. Make sure that you don't sew all the way through. I'm just going to sew it to the black portion only. And I only sew the back portion of the tongue, not the flap. So not the end of the tongue, only the back of the tongue. That way the front of the tongue will be able to move. And then just make sure you sew it in place really well. So 
So now, after you have the tongue sewn on, you're ready to take the same colored yarn and just sew the edges together. Then you want to line up and center the mouth. Make sure that the tongue is where you want it and that the front is level with the front of the snout. And then once you're happy with the placement, then you can take and sew the bottom of the snout in place. So along the back edge. You want to make sure that you only go towards the inside of the snout and not all the way through. And then just sew it in place. So after you sew across the bottom, then you're going to take and sew across the side of the mouth. So you just go in and out and sew along the side. And then this is what the mouth looks like when I'm finished. And the snout is ready to be sewn onto the head. So now you want to take the head and we're going to sew the snout in place. So you want to choose the panel that you want for the front of the face and then take some craft stuffing and then put it into the snout. I just use an old pillow. So this one, I just got an inexpensive pillow from Walmart. And then just take the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle and you're going to take and line up the snout with the bottom of the head. And then you're going to come up Make sure it's lined up evenly on both sides. And then you're going to come up through the bottom of the head into the snout. And you're going to sew all around the base of the snout and secure it in place. So now you should have your snout sewn on and we're ready to make the eyes. So now I'm going to show you how to make the eye. It's already made one. You're going to make two of them. We're going to start with our white colored yarn and we're going to start with a magic circle. So you just take and drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And then you're going to take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers Bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. And then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to hold the base of the six single crochet with your forefinger and your thumb. And you have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. So I'm going to close as much as I can and then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. And then just turn your work so that you're working in circles. And you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round. 
you're going to go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull a little bit of yarn through because we're not going to be using the white yarn to sew the eyes in place. And at this point you can turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end on the center to close up the center of the magic circle. And now you're going to get your black colored yarn and you're going to join right where you finished off. So you just take and bring up a loop with your black colored yarn. And then you're going to tie a knot. And then you're going to chain one. That will count as your first stitch for the round. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to alternate one single crochet into the first stitch. And then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet into the second stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So for mine, I'm back to where I started and I have this one space in between. I'm going to go ahead and just make a stitch in there and then I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch that I made. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. So just yarn over and this time you're going to pull enough yarn through to sew the eye in place. So what I do at this point is I turn my work over and I have the long end that I left for sewing the black yarn off to the side and I'm going to take the other loose yarn ends and just tie a knot with them because I'm going to cut them and trim them down. And now you're ready to make the pupil for the eye. So for the pupil, you want to grab your black colored yarn, or whatever color you want for the pupils of the eye. And again, we're going to start with the magic circle. But this time, we're still going to start with the slip knot, but this time you're going to make four single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then you're going to close it the same way. And then you're just going to turn your work and then you're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch. So you go into that first stitch and then just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to sew the pupil in place. And you can pull on that back yarn, loose yarn end to close up the center of the pupil. And then you're going to take your tapestry needle onto the short end on the back that you use to close the center of the magic circle. And then you're going to take the other portion of the eye. And I usually sew the pupil over the end where we made all the slip stitch and color changes. So I just place the pupil right onto that part of the eye and usually the opposite side of the pupil 
is in line with the magic circle on the white portion. And then I'm just going to bring my smaller loose yarn end through. Then I'm going to take the long end that I left for sewing. And then I'm going to sew the pupil in place. Then when I'm finished sewing the pupil in place, I just tie a knot on the back with the two loose yarn ends for the black yarn. And I, saw, I tie several knots and then I just trim the loose yarn ends. You want them hidden for when you sew the eye in place. So all of the loose yarn ends are kind of tucked into the inside and then the eye is ready to be sewn onto the dog. So here is my other eye. And you want to line up the pupils so that the pupil is on the inside towards the inner portion. Then just line up the eyes. Make sure that the pupils are even, that they are facing towards the nose, that they're centered. And I have about a stitch between the eyes and they line up exactly on the sides of the front panel. And I just sew with the black yarn all the way around the edge of the eye and sew it in place. Now after you sew the eyelashes, on, I mean the eyes on, we're ready to sew the eyelashes. So I'm going to show you how to make those. Go ahead and set this aside for now. Not the eyelashes, the eyebrows. We're going to make the eyebrows. So you're going to start with your black yarn. Fold it over to make a loop. We're going to start with our slip knot. I mean, yeah, our slip knot. And then you're going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then a single crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to slip stitch into the last stitch. So you just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook and then go ahead and finish off. And bring enough yarn through to sew the eyebrow in place and then what I do is I just tie a knot between the small loose yarn end and the long end that you left for sewing and you're going to need two of these. And now you have an eyebrow ready to be sewn in place. So go ahead and make another one. So now you can take and sew the eyebrows in place. So you can see I left about one row between the top of the eyes and the eyebrow. And then I kind of angled it about 45 degrees. You just want to be careful with the expression because you don't want an angry face, so you don't want it down. So I found that towards the edge and angled it about 45 degrees and about a row up gave a cute little expression. Now we're ready to sew the top on the head. So you're going to want to turn your work inside out and make sure that you're sewing the top of the head where the eyebrows are. So you don't want to sew the top of the head on the snout because this is the neck portion. So make sure that you have the right side up, the wrong side is facing you, and then you're ready to sew the top on. So go ahead and grab your top and we're going to get ready to sew it in place. You should have a long end left for sewing and it should fit the lengthwise should fit right on top, so the longer edge towards the eyes and the back of the head. And then you just grab your tapestry needle to get ready to sew it in place. If you don't have a long end that you left for sewing, you can grab the same colored yarn. 
to sew the top in place and then you just take the edges and again you're forming a ridge and all of your ridges will be on the wrong side so you know that if you have a ridge on the right side that you lined it up wrong so you want to make sure that you have it lined up correctly and then you're able to sew all around the top of the head make sure that it's secure then after you finish sewing the top on you can take and turn the work back so that the right side is facing you.